I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm Nostra Ben, and I host this episode with my childhood friend, Johnny D. Hey, how's you going, my friend, today? Yeah, fine. Uh, sorry yeah, for, sorry the... for the microphone. <laughs> so, hey, today we have a special guest. Oh, and yeah. I- I'm talking about uh, Mr. Steve Lombardi. And everyone, we uh, have uh, uh, Mr. Brooklyn Brawler, and we would like uh, to discuss... Uh, about the many faces of Lombardi. So let me introduce yourself, Mr. Brooklyn Brawler. As is, you going today? This is the Brooklyn Brawler, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is super awesome that you accept our invitation. We know that you are very busy. And if me, my memory is good, you are in uh, Michigan today, right? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, go ahead with uh, the first uh, question, my friend. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, first of all, are you a fan of the Ran- New York Rangers or uh, uh, New York Yankees uh, while you're living in Brooklyn, New York? Well, to, to be honest with you, when I became uh, the Brooklyn Brawler, Bobby Heenan said, wear a Yankee shirt. He says, because people don't like the Yankees and they would boo <laughs> you more. Okay. So that's that's probably the reason why. Okay, perfect. And um, we we would like to um, go back um, and we'd like to discuss about um, your story, uh, your wrestling debut, of course. Uh, where did you, uh, Mister uh, Saito and Arnold uh, Skahalan, do you uh, do your wrestling training? So where where uh, you learn your uh, wrestling skills my friend okay i'll tell you the whole story this is how it happened somebody gave me tickets to madison square garden i was living in brooklyn okay i never been to a wrestling match in my life okay so, so I'm, I'm watching i'm watching the wrestling live the guy next to me says hey i could tell you never been to a wrestling show before i said how can you tell that because you look so intrigued looking at the wrestlers if you want to meet the wrestlers They're about four blocks from here at the Savoy. It's a, it's a bar where all the wrestlers go to right after the garden show. Okay. Wait about 30 minutes, go down there, and go, and you can meet all the wrestlers. So after the show, I was with a couple of friends, and I said to them, you want to go? They said, sure. I went down there, and I, in, in, the, in the bar was Mr. Fuji, Arnold Skolin, Jimmy Snooker, uh, Cowboy Bob Thornton Jr. I introduced myself to them. And they, kind of, they, 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 they kind of blew me off at first. Nice. You know, like, don't bother us. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we didn't know who I was or anything. I was nobody yet. So I went and I sat down at the bar next to Jimmy Snooker. Okay. So Jimmy Snooker, I said, Jimmy, I just want to let you know, I've never been to a wrestling show before and I admire everything you're doing. And I have a dream that one day I will be a wrestler. And his words, exact words were in his voice too was, Brother, I just want to tell you, if you have it in your heart, you can do anything you want. If you believe you can be a wrestler, you can do it. That's what Jimmy Snooker told me. So after Jimmy Snooker told me that, I got the dream. That's what I'm going to do. So I kept coming back every week, every week, every week, every month, every month, every month to Madison Square Garden, go into the bar, bugging them, bugging them, bugging them. Then finally they told me to show up in Shirley, Long Island. Arnold Scolan told me, show up at Sterling Long Island. And they threw me in the ring with uh, S.D. Jones. You remember him? Yeah. Special day for Jones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I wrestled him. And, uh, okay. I, you know, we just, you know, I didn't know anything about wrestling. And, uh, you know, before I went in the ring, they were bumping me around. And uh, and Arnold Scolan had uh, 
had uh, like three guys go in the ring and slam me one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. Then he had Mr. Saito come in the ring and give me a belly to belly suplex. And I said, holy cow. I, I mean, when he gave it to me, I felt like this is going to kill me if I do this. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that, and then Mr. Saito talks to Arnold, he goes, heavy. And I thought that was a good term, because I thought, you know, hey, I'm working out, I'm big, you know what I mean? I'm heavy. No, but it meant I, I went up very heavy, you know? So I just kept going back and back and back. Within one year of going there, I was wrestling in Madison Square Garden. Nice. I just fell into the business. Okay, I... Uh... If I understand, uh, earlier in the interview, you told us uh, that uh, Bobby Heenan was behind the the, uh, the character of Brooklyn Brawler. Right, Bobby Heenan came up with Brooklyn Brawler, okay. and he and he uh, he came up with the Yankee outfit, and then he told me to come outside the arena and roll around in mud. I said, Bobby, why do you want me to do that? He goes, I want you to be a grimy, dirty, ass kicking butt wrestler. <laughs> nobody that's scared of nobody, and I just did what he said. So I got all dirty and. And my clothes, even when I washed them, they they looked dirty, but they were never dirty because I always washed them. But you know that was that, that was the persona they gave me. And then I, uh, I I kept wrestling as the Brooklyn Brawler, Brooklyn Brawler. And then I had a dream and wanted to wrestle in Madison Square Garden. And then all of a sudden I met, I wrestled in Madison Square Garden against Mad Dog Vashon, first first person I ever wrestled in front of in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And then I wrestled there so many times, over and over and over. And then, eventually, I had The Rock's first match. Did you know that? Oh, no. I, I Did you know that? Because I believe that your first match was uh, against my dog, Vershawn, So that Yes, but to... Rock's first match was against me. Okay, nice. You know, so if you watch... Uh, I don't know if you ever watch Young Rock. Yeah. yeah watch I, season... I I season watch. Listen, season two, episode eight... Okay. You're not going to remember, so write it down. Season two, episode eight. Okay. It's called Corpus Christi. Okay. So the so the Rock is going to have his first debut as Dwayne Johnson. He okay. walks in the ring. They start booing him. Nice. Now when they're booing him, I said, "Don't worry, just follow. Watch what I do." So he gets in the ring. I said, "Do a couple of fancy moves." I throw him in. He ducks my clothesline. He leapfrogs me. He doesn't. He does all kinds of fancy moves. They're still boo booing him. They're booing him. They're booing him. They're booing him. He says to me, it's not working. I says, I didn't do it yet. Watch. So then all of a sudden, I kicked him in the stomach. I beat the hell out of him. I started beating him up so bad. And I, I beat him up. I left him laying. I, I flipped him over. I put him in a reverse chin lock. Then he, and then he looks up at me and he goes, what do we do now? I said, you shut up. You take your right arm and you start shaking it slowly. And we'll care if the people care about you. So as, as he's shaking his arm, all the booze began to began to become cheers. So I turned him from a bad guy to a good guy. By the time he got his hand all the way up, the people were cheering him. The Holy Arena was, this is in Corpus Christi in 1996. Rock only had $7 in the bank. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he, That's why he named his production company, Seven Bucks Production. So basically I says, okay, here's your comeback. He, he, uh, he threw a few punches, threw me in, gave me an elbow, picked me up. Threw me in. I, I reversed. I went for a backdrop. He gave me a sunset flip. One, two, three. People went crazy. People loved him. Two yeah. days later, he got a, a big contract. Nice. That's the that's the way Rock was born. If you watch the series, you could see us talking in it. Yeah. Rock commentates the entire mm -hmm. series, and he explains how I had his first match and broke him in, and I broke his dad in WWF too, Rocky Johnson. So you uh, you Two. were a big asset for Mr. Dwayne. So congratulations first, oh, yeah. because this is uh, an interesting story and we didn't know that. So uh, we would like to uh, jump um, practically one decade after um, <laughs> in the mid-90s. Vince McMahon proposed you to replace Matt Bourne as Don the Clown. Very good. That's can a good story. Can you share oh. uh, some details about that? This is how it happened. I was washing my car in the driveway. The phone rings. <laughs> my wife my wife calls me calls me, and she goes, it's a phone call. It's Vince. I said, Vince? He goes, she goes, yeah. So I said, Vince, what's up? He goes, I need you to do me a favor, pal. I said, what is it, Vince? He goes, 
I need you to fly to Calgary and I need you to wrestle Bret Hart for the WWF at the time World Heavyweight Championship in his hometown. Mm -hmm. I said, no problem. I wrestled Bret's debut match in, Cor in uh, Cincinnati Gardens. I have no problem wrestling Bret. I wrestled him many times. He goes, as doink. I said, Vince, I don't mind doing that, going to Calgary and wrestling Bret, but it's the paint job that I'm worried about. He goes, ha, ha, ha. He goes, I knew you were going to say that. What we're going to do is we're going to fly you from Detroit to Cleveland, where Matt Bourne's wife is going to give you the outfit. Then we're going to fly you from Cleveland to, to uh, Stanford, Connecticut, where the base was, where you're going to meet Jill, the makeup girl, and she's <laughs> going to teach you the whole paint job and give you all the necessities you need. Okay. okay. Then we're going to fly you to Calgary. Then you're going to wrestle Brett in the main event for the WWF World oh. Heavyweight Championship. It wasn't a televised match. It was a taped match. It was a dark match, we call it, non-televised. So you can't find that on YouTube. But if you ask Brett, he'll tell you the whole story. But uh, that's how I became Doink the Clown. Then I started wrestling as Doink all over the place. Then they sent me overseas as Doink. And uh, that's, how, that's how Doink was born. Okay. Uh, under the wing of the legendary Bobby the Brain Eden, uh, Share with us an interesting story involving both of you. Bobby and I? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, Bobby was a unique individual. He was very funny. He was fun to be around. He was a great guy. And he told me, you're in my stable now. You know how to wrestle. Now we're going to make teach you how to make money. So I followed everything Bobby told me to do. And, I be, and you know, Red Rooster was uh, part of his family. And then they had, they had a, you know, an argument and they got you know out of it I don't, so he made me attack red rooster beat the hell out of red rooster and then uh wrestlemania five yeah you got it yeah. and that, that's when no, yeah. no that's when bobby wrestled red rooster in mm -hmm. wrestlemania five yeah. and then red rooster beat him like in two minutes and i jumped in the ring and then i left red rooster laying and then Ray Rooster made a comeback and he threw my hat to the ring yes, and so then they said to me hey vince wants you to do a Want you to do an interview in the back, you know, after this, after what you just did, and this and that. And I so I went in the back. So I go to the uh, see a red rooster threw my hat to the audience, you know, because he, he started making a comeback. So I went to the back, and, and Vince goes, "Where's your hat?" I said, I, "I don't know. I must have lost it." He goes, "No, you didn't. I watched Terry Taylor throw it to the audience." I say, Vince, you can't turn me into a stooge. I says, "I will not." I will not. I, I will not say somebody did something because I'm not going to, you know, make Terry look bad. But I don't have my hat with me, so that, that that's a story that actually happened. So, but that was WrestleMania '85. That's the first time I wrestled. I met Donald Trump because he owned he owned the building we were in, and uh, it was a great adventure because I was wrestling Terry Taylor for like. Uh, a year and the program was ending. And then when I did that at WrestleMania five, it renewed the whole angle. They got me another nine months out of it. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we know that you have been involved in the career of Kamala. So how did you receive the offer to become the, of uh, Kamala under the persona of uh, Kim Shi, my friend? Well, it always, it was always a phone call from Vince. He, just, he says, okay, we're bringing... once again, <laughs> okay. What's that? Once again, the telephone. Yeah. He <laughs> says, uh, it's always the phone call. And okay. he says, uh, we want you to be a safari outfit with a mask, with a safari hat, and then manage Kamala. So I was the Brooklyn Brawler at the time. So I'd be wrestling as Brooklyn Brawler as the first match. And then Kamala was always in the main event against Hulk Hogan or. Uh, Undertaker, so I would wrestle two times in one show, but people would not know that I was the kimchi. Okay. Now, the funny thing about kimchi was he talked, you know, Ugandan, uga, 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 shaka, uga. But I, if I, if Kamala was like, he would go to me, uh, uga, uga, and I would call him over to the <laughs> turnbuckle, and then he would just say to me, kimchi, I just forgot everything I was supposed to do in a normal voice like that. <laughs> and I said, James, I, I said, his name was James. I said, James, you know, you, you go to lock up, the guys are going to slam you, you can't slam you, you hit you, you hit him in the head, you do this, go for an elbow, he'll move. He goes, gotcha. And I just go, Uga, Uga, go get him, Uga. 
you know, <laughs> that, that's like an inside deal that nobody knows, you know. <laughs> so that's how that happened. Fun. Now, Abe Knuckleball Schwartz. Nice. Yeah. And um, go ahead. Yeah, I have a, a question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, in 2005, uh, you were involved uh, for uh, Ivan Reich's fa face turn as a Boston brawler. Do, do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you share us the, this experience? Yeah, Shem, uh, what was his name? Heidenreich. Yeah, I don't write it. Right. Yeah, he would take, he would he would say poems, and then he called me out to say a poem to me, a real polite poem, this and that, and the company had it written in where I told him his poem was the shits, and a matter of fact, New York is the shits, and I took my shirt off and I had a Boston shirt on, then I had I took my leather cap off and I had a Boston hat in my pocket and I put it on and it was almost a riot. Because New York and Boston hate each other, you know, as far as teams. So, so that was that was that's how the Boston ball, the uh, Boston ball came along. But I, I didn't like it because it, it hurt my Brooklyn ball of character. But I, I did a retraction in the magazine to say that it was scripted and it was written. And I really love New York, and I feel, you know, because I, you know, that's my hometown. And about baseball, we know that in 1994, you wrestled as Abe Knuckleball Schwartz, a okay. Major League Baseball player. So who's behind right. the creative of this gimmick? Okay. Do you remember the movie you Remember the movie years ago, The Warriors? The Warriors? Uh, mm, not in what happened. year? In what year? Oh, many years ago. You're probably too young for that. But, but anyway, I came up with the idea as a face painted as a baseball. <laughs> Damien Demento, do you remember him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was a great artist. I said, Damien, draw me a picture of a face with a baseball on it. I said, and uh, just a face with the, as a baseball. So I knocked on Vince's door and I said, Vince, look at this. Take the, and he looked at, he put his glasses to the tip of his nose. He looked at the picture and he goes, Hmm, very interesting. I'll give it some thought. And I said, can I say one more thing? He goes, go ahead. I said, it's never been done before. And he said, really? <laughs> and, then he, and, then he, and then he did it. So it, did, it didn't last but six or seven months because he said there was too much face paint in the company. He had oh. Doink, he had me, he had gold dust. Yeah. And I, so I told him, get rid of Doink as a joke. LOD was there, you know, but, all uh, yeah, yes, exactly. but believe it or not, when I go to autograph signings, that picture sells, sells great. Oh, uh, probably know. because this is very, uh, this is a, a rare thing. It's know, nostalgic. Like, it's very nostalgic. Yeah, very nostalgic, you know. Yeah. yeah and pe people like the look of it, you know, and I, you know, I had a baseball uniform and, uh, you know, it was just interesting. And then Doink the Clown, I told you, I told you Abe Knuckleball Schwartz, I told you Kim mm -hmm. Chi, I told you Brooklyn Brawler. But there was a, there was the Knights, the Red Knights and the Blue Knights with, with uh, I think it was uh, Jerry D. King Lawler against Shawn Michaels with, with Knights. And I was a Knight also. I was a kangaroo in a kangaroo suit that came in with the Bushwhackers. Nobody knows that. Oh, so you actually oh. got some information that no one else has got. Oh, nice. And you can find that on YouTube. You can find most of the stuff on YouTube. You can find I had a match with Shawn Michaels in Madison Square Garden for the World Heavyweight Championship uh, with Hunter and China on the outside. Wow. And, and uh, that was in front of 23,000 people. Oh. And that was an interesting way that happened. I'll give you that story. This is going to be my, my last big story that you're going to get because they pay me huge money to tell these stories, and I'm giving them to you very, very, very cheap. Okay, we're having a battle royal at Madison Square Garden. Yes. Now, Ken Shamrock is supposed to beat everyone and go, you know, win win the battle royal. Ken Shamrock, actually, I seen him two days ago. I reminded him of this. He uh, he hurt himself a couple of matches before, so I everybody went in Vince's room, including myself, and they said Ken Shamrock cannot win the battle royal because he's hurt. He can't do it. So Vince looks up at me and he says. Put over the Brooklyn Brawler, he's local, forgetting wow. that he advertised the winner of the Battle Royal has the World Heavyweight Championship match in the next garden show. <laughs> okay. So 
I went, I, I was thinking that, but I just went out there and I did it. I think anybody would have. And then, and then uh, when I came out, what, all the agents told me it would never happen. I went into Vince's room and I told Vince, I said, Vince, you advertised the winner, wrestles the World Heavyweight Champion. He said, you got your match. So I actually got the match with Sean. It was going to be with Bret Hart. But the mat, the month after that was the Montreal screw job. Yeah. You know about that. You're Canadian. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know 26 that? years ago, yeah. It's a piece of history, you know. Oh, yeah. So it was so it was the Montreal screw job. So now I was supposed to wrestle Brett. So now Sean becomes the world heavyweight champion. Mm -hmm. So I thought Sean Michaels would, would say no. You know what I mean? I don't want to wrestle him. I don't want to do that. So I'm sitting in a bar with Arnold Skolan, and they and he turns to Sean. He was in a bar with I, Kevin Nash, it was, and Razor, and he and he says, "You know, you're wrestling in the next Garden Show." He goes, "Who?" He goes, "The Brooklyn Brawler." I said to myself, "Oh, here it goes. It's all over now. It's all yeah. over now." I he goes, "Can you leapfrog? Can you super kick? Can you do this? Can you do that?" He was totally 100% into it. So he went out there and he gave me 110%. He treated me like he was wrestling a, uh, in a main event. You know, he just did everything to me. Hunter was jumping on the apron. I, I would hit him. I'd knock him off the apron. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can actually see that match if you look it up. But uh, that, that that's that's an interesting story right there. Really, I mean, the Montreal Screwjob right in between, oh, right man. in between the win and the Battle Royal. You know, it, it was like, where's it going to go now? <laughs> so thank you so much for your uh, 20 minutes a uh, generous time this is very appreciated honestly and as usual for uh, closing this episode Nostradamus Ben it's all about the French prophet so he tried to predict the future of our guests okay uh, yeah of course yours? first of all thank you so much Mr. Lombardi it was an honor to speak with you well, I appreciate being on there. You guys are real professionals. It's a great podcast. Thank are you in Montreal? We Quebec are City. from Quebec City at three hours of Montreal uh, on the, the east side. Okay. I used to wrestle in Montreal all the time. Nice. You know, we are the Nordics. No, not the Canadians. The yes, Nordics. Yes, we are. The old, what was the forum? Was it the forum? Uh, uh, Bell Center in Montreal. Bell Cent well, it, uh, forum was... Uh, old, uh, well, many old, years ago. The old amphitheater, and now in Montreal, we have a uh, Bell Center. But in Quebec City, we have a brand new amphitheater called uh, Vito Tron Center. And uh, recently, we received a WWE Raw for the first time ever. So, uh, August 21st. Yeah. Great, great. I used to love Montreal. I used to go to Giovanni's. Is that still there? No. No, God, Schwartz. Is Schwartz still there? Schwartz is a restaurant. It's a restaurant, right? Yeah, yes. Roland Gillil was the owner. Yeah, yes. Yeah, still yeah. there? Uh, I believe that it's closed. Uh, Everything closed. Yes, but because the pandemic was, <laughs> was very hard for the restaurant industry and bars, of course. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, so, but uh, good history, <laughs> good history, but his, you know, memories last forever. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Lombardi, I predict to you uh, one more, one last appearance uh, yeah. on Raw or on SmackDown uh, as Brooklyn Brawler. Maybe Boston Brawler with Iron Wright. No, that's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm kidding. All right. So, thank you so much for your time. And have thank a great you. Time. I appreciate you guys asking me to be on. I endorse this uh, podcast 100%. Perfect. Everyone. And uh, thank you very much. Have a great day. Goodbye. Take care. Bye-bye. Take out. care.